As the 2017 summer travel season gets underway, we're highlighting a teacher at Rio Americana High School. He's the consummate traveler. Brian Asher teaches Spanish at Rio, and he's been to all 50 states, 69 countries. He's quite an athlete. He's summited 325 mountains and completed 62 marathons, some in other countries. He started his own travel website called theworldhiker.com, and Brian is now joining us. Incredible accomplishments, and you're pretty young, so you've done a lot in a short amount of time. You have to tell us how this all started, Brian. Well, first, thanks for having me on. Sure. Um, growing up, I didn't travel, I didn't hike, never really spent time outdoors, and my brother talked me into going to a summer camp in Colorado, where I met all kinds of inspiring people, uh, spent my first few nights hiking and camping, and just totally got into it, and met people who had worked training Sherpas in the Himalayas, who had been to Antarctica, and they got me into thinking about traveling and being outdoors and stepping out of my comfort zone. That's amazing that you didn't grow up with that. But here you are, and you've done all these amazing things all around the world, and you've started a website. And tell us what the website's actually aiming to do. Well, the idea is it came kind of from my inspiration and also uh, from my students. I teach 200 students at Rio Americano, and they were saying um, beginning of this year and the last year that I should create some kind of website, have a way to share all the experiences that I've had. And so started working on it here at the beginning of the year and has all kinds of tips and ideas for how to travel, how to do it on a budget as someone who's a teacher and has taught in the U.S. and abroad for the last eight or nine years, and also ways to get outdoors and how I kind of plan my trips and inspiring stories to help get my students, friends, family, and all those who could live vicariously through me uh, to think about traveling and spending more time outdoors. And of course, some of the places you've been are pretty exotic, so a lot of people will be looking just to as you said, experience vicariously. But for those who do want to maybe get some tips and maybe they think, gosh, I've never talked to someone who's been to you know this place, it's probably on your map and your website's great. It's very interactive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has a lot of information about the different countries. Uh, last summer I spent time in countries such as Brunei and East Timor, which are more or less off of people's radar. So a lot of the main countries that people visit are on there and also um, countries that are more obscure that are harder to get to. So goal is to continue to visit. Hopefully one day we'll get to almost all the countries in the world and to share and inspire people to get out there and to try to see some of these places for themselves as well. Well, the photographs you have are magazine quality and they're and book quality. They're absolutely stunning. And so I recommend people go and look at the website. You probably have a million stories, but is there maybe just one you can share with us about an exotic place you've been or an experience that was unanticipated? Or Well, I think for me last summer, one of the big highlights was getting into the Himalayas and went with a professor friend of mine who teaches at Colorado State and him and I spent several nights with Tibetan families in their homes up in the Himalayas there before doing some of the major treks. And so without too much language and just that understanding that we needed a place to stay and that they wanted to take care of us, they prepared us our meals and we spent several nights there before starting our trek in the Himalayas and just continued to uh, plan these trips and put a lot of effort into getting them ready and sharing those ideas but also not fearing and not believing every single thing that I see in the news because uh, what stands out to me are there are so many good people who are willing to help you out and that's happened in all 69 countries for me having met so many wonderful people like this Tibetan family along the way that's just willing to take you in and help meet your needs. You know that's really interesting what and you mentioned the news, of course, we're in the news business, and I think there is so much fear of travel right now. People are just concerned and afraid, and I think it's nice to have another representation of someone who's out going fearlessly and, and you know, following their heart and their dream to, to see the world the way that they want to. So that's kind of encouraging, I think, yeah. Well, uh, if you had a tip for someone that's maybe never traveled since you didn't grow up traveling and <laughs> thinking, I don't know, I've never been outside of my comfort zone. Anything you want to share to kind of give them a little emphasis? Yeah, to? I had never traveled until I was 20 years old, so uh, junior year in college. And so for me, just that first step of going, whether it's an abroad, whether it's going and staying with friends of friends or a family member, for me, uh, I started with hostels, and hostels are a wonderful way for younger people. I tell this to my students all the time to travel and to meet people. I stay there over spring break, was in a hostel in Ireland with 350 other travelers. So if you want to be on your own, you can. If you want friends, 
and people to do activities with. I had 350 other people to choose from there to do things with, and it costs $10 a night, for example, or $15 or $20 a night. And so it's an affordable way to do it. And I would say just don't let that fear stop you from doing what you're inspired or what you'd really like to do. And for me, that's something I continue to try to live by and share with my students, friends, and family. Beautiful. Well, one final question. What's the most exotic place? I mean, you've been to so many, 69 countries that you've seen a lot, I'm sure, but is there one that you could pick, or are they all, you know, unique in their own way? I'm sure they are. Uh, every, every country is totally unique. I think for me, I spent two and a half years living in Brazil. I taught English to business executives in a language school in southern Brazil. And one of the coolest weeks of my life was going down a boat down the Amazon River from a tiny town called Tabachinga, and speaking Portuguese with all the locals as the boat you know, stopped and let people on and off with local people and their motorcycles and fruit and just seeing the life on the Amazon River it was something for me that I had dreamed about since three, four years old when I watched Discovery and National Geographic. So that, that's one of them that really sticks in my memory for me. Uh, well, Ryan, you've done more in, in your short life than people have done in many lifetimes. So uh, pretty incredible. And if you want to check it out, it's theworldhiker.com. That's the website. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, perfect. Okay, well, we'll uh, put a link to that. And Brian Asher, again, teacher at Rio Americano High School. And shout out to the kids, right? Yep, shout out to all six periods. Got 200 <laughs> students every day, so I would be remiss if I didn't mention them. So hello to all my kids there at Rio. There you go. All right, Brian Asher, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Perfect. Okay. Great. That's great. <laughs> well, that was good. That wasn't too oh bad. Oh my gosh, you're better than half the people I talked to. <laughs> you have no idea. No, that was awesome. That was really good. Perfect. No, good questions. That was that was right on and I wrote this up, but yeah. Didn't you didn't, really you didn't even get it because you're just spot on, so. <laughs>